Hello everyone and welcome to VIP, the lowest rated Game Boy Advance game on GameFAQs.com. This game is based on a comedy series that parodies various spy media and makes fun of the uh, tabloid image of... I think her name's Pamela Anderson? I don't... I don't remember. But uh, I looked at a little bit of it and I can tell you that for sure it doesn't take itself seriously and it's very goofy. But you're not going to see any of that in this game, so don't get your hopes up. What this game is, actually, is a run and gun. Where you move from one side of the screen to the other and shoot all the bad guys. And, uh, I was kind of wondering, how bad could it possibly be? And the answer is, I don't think it's nearly bad enough to be rated the lowest rated Game Boy Advance game on GameFAQs.com, but... Uh, you know... A lot of other people might not have as much patience. So right now we're playing as Val, the main character, and we can hop behind fences, as well as leap onto and from balconies and other such things by pressing jump and either up or down. We have a single weapon with infinite ammo and we have a melee attack. We just got a power up which allows us to rapidly fire our gun. You may notice that we are in a state of permanent crouching and crawling across the ground, and this is because, largely, the enemy's attacks can be avoided simply by crouching. So there's no reason not to just be crouching at all times. Yet, yeah, you move a bit faster when you're not crouching, but the goal of the game is to preserve your health, defeat all the enemies, and reach the end. And if you're not crouching, that's significantly harder. We also have a melee attack, which we automatically use when an enemy gets close enough. Val's melee attack is easily the best of them, but I wouldn't rely on your melee attack if you, uh, if you can avoid it. The game is very linear. There are the occasional extra areas, but for the most part, you know where to go and how to get there. For the most part, there is one level that very much stands in the way of that. So, the main gimmick of this game is that you'll reach a cutscene and one of the characters will need another team member to do something. So, you'll switch to playing as another character, and you'll do this multiple times throughout the level. It's sort of an attempt to make the levels seem more elaborate than they actually are, but it really comes across as forced with how many times characters end up getting kidnapped or needing an item that only someone else can reach. Right now we're playing as Quick. Uh, Quick is my least favorite character to play with, he has a shotgun, which is noticeably more powerful and hits enemies easier, but his crouching animation is less crouchy, so he is hit much easier by enemies than all the other characters. And you might be wondering, uh, why this? Why this game? Why are you playing this? Well, aside from it being the lowest rated GBA game on game FAQs, I guess I was just curious by the screenshots. The sprite work isn't fantastic or anything, but it reminds me a bit of Sega Master System games. And I felt like I hadn't been doing enough exploring lately, enough going out of my way to find weird shit. So I decided now was a good time to get into that, and when I commit to something, I really commit to it. That's why I am shy of commitment and try not to take it lightly. That's a good way to say I don't like commitment. Makes it sound better. But, uh, so, I beat and recorded this game all in one night. Which may not sound so bad given how short it is, but... There is one reason I can think for this game to be so lowly rated. Aside from the game just being kind of bland and based on a license that very few people seem to have a fondness for, the boss battles in this game are obscenely unfair toward the player. But, uh, I've got a PhD in cheesing video games, so I was able to make my way through them without much issue. This purple orb we're about to collect, uh, this is a screen-clearing desperation attack, basically a fuck it button for when you don't feel like dealing with shit anymore. And I generally save those for boss battles, because the regular enemies are not threatening enough to waste that on. Really, careful placement of your character and moving at the right times is all you need to deal with normal enemies. Now, when you need to switch floors like this, like I have to hop up onto that floor, it's very hard to find a right time to do that. Because, you know, if an enemy's anywhere near you when you switch floors, you're really vulnerable. Thankfully, there are a lot of health pickups in this section. This music is 
kind of entrancing. It's bizarre. It doesn't really fit the show at all, though. Neither does the environment or what you do in the game, to be honest. But I do kind of like the graphics, even if they're... Even if the GBA was capable of much better than this. So back to the reasons I'm playing this. In addition to uh, the other two reason reasons I listed, the reason this game is getting a longer video instead of just a game analysis video is because the bosses are some bullshit. This guy is ridiculous. Unless you do the following. Stand directly in front of him, crouch, and shoot him in the face. That's the only way i found to beat him successfully. Otherwise, you may as well just give up. And I kind of love that. Like, I tried approaching the situation thoughtfully many times, tried taking cover, dodging away from his grenades and gunfire, and it just didn't work. I was just getting destroyed over and over, so I thought, what if I just charge in there and blast away? And it fucking worked. Now, not all the bosses are that easy to figure out, but most of the bosses are similar in the sense that they're complete and utter bullshit until you find the one way to take them out without getting hurt yourself or just find the way to tank the damage optimally and win a war of attrition. The, ba the boss battles are really just absolute nonsense, so that's what this video is for. Not the uh, main gameplay, which is walking around shooting guys, but the boss battles. So with that being said, let's see the boss of level 2 and how I beat him, and you are gonna love it. So the thing about games like this is I get scared of getting legitimately stuck. Like, it's semi-uncharted territory. Like, st stuff like this, you know, you don't know. But this guy, we're about to fight. I just had to turn my cheesing on maximum. And then I finally found a way. Trying to tackle him head-on, it doesn't fucking work. He'll just destroy you. So what you want to do is take damage, clip through him with invincibility frames, jump over here, stand to the far left, and only shoot at him when his grenades have finished exploding. And this, this is what all the bosses are like. Either you're bullshitting the bosses, or the bosses are bullshitting you. It's cheese or be cheesed. And the rest of this video is just going to be a montage of all the boss fights, some of the most enjoyable and worst bosses I've ever played in any video game. So I hope you enjoy this uh, display. Oh, my God. 